I wanted to make this video as almost a breakdown of my new film that has just come out called Photography is a Gift. Uh, if you haven't seen it, please check that out before watching this video. This video won't make a lot of sense unless you watch it, so please go, uh, go watch it if you haven't already. I wanted to do a short film about a topic that was relatable to both creatives and people who just had a hobby. And I wanted to make a strong tone pushing the idea of losing touch of doing what you love and then reconnecting with it by going back to why you started doing it in the first place. I shot this whole film on the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K on the 18 to 35 Sigma Art lens. And I shot the whole thing at 35 millimeters. The crew was just me, um, me filming and doing the lighting. And then obviously Ethan being the main character, we kind of both decided on some shots if the ones we had planned didn't work. The lighting we used was just the, the Nanolite 4 to 60 and a cheap Amazon light bar and natural sunlight. They were just the three, three main light sources we used. Um, that's all we had. So that's what we're going to use. I knew I wanted to shoot this in four by three. So I had that in mind when shooting. I didn't really accommodate for anything at the edge of the frame. I was really making sure everything in the middle was aligned. Um, and it was kind of fun in the, in the editing process, not moving the image up and down, more so left than right. Uh, again, to really try and centralize the video. And I chose this aspect ratio because I wanted to be really close in. I wanted you to really focus on the emotion that Ethan was feeling and um, not get distracted by anything else in the frame. As a quick overview of the color grade, I had a very particular idea of how I wanted it to look. And I guess this is my style now um, because it's, it's a grade that I, I often turn to a lot. And it's kind of that like deep green shadows with like a an orangey highlight mid-tones. I just love it. That's how I see film. I think that's why I love the Batman so much. Uh, Matt Reeves' new one with um, Robert Patterson because it followed the same color palette and I just love that so much. It's just how I imagine film to be. Uh, the voiceover took about three days to do. Uh, I sent a voice note to Ethan of how I wanted him to say the script and he just blew it out of the water completely. Like his voice and the tone he uses is just perfect. And it's probably one of my favorite things about the whole project. It just comes together so nicely. I really sat and thought about the script, but at the same time, it kind of just flowed. Like it, it took a while to get it started, but then once it started, everything kind of just followed sentence after sentence and i really wanted that to be the main driving point of the whole um the whole film it took two full days to film the entire thing back to back sundays we were quite lucky with the weather which i'll touch on in, the, in uh, a little bit later in the video we'll start with scene one with the bookshelf with this one i actually wanted a wide angle uh i actually wanted a, an establishing shot of the wide angle with the bookcase in the background of him sat there but with the room we had, it didn't quite work how I envisioned it in my head. So I opted to be very close in and use and use like a shallow depth of field, especially on the phone. I think I was at like F1.2, I think. Um, obviously with the adapter on the Blackmagic, it allows you to go a few stops down. I'm really just pointing your focus on one particular thing in that frame, which I actually really like. And I kind of followed that same theme across the whole video. And the book in the video, funny enough, isn't actually a real book. Like we printed off that cover. Um, and just stuck it onto an existing book he already had. I mean, the book itself is real, but we didn't actually buy the book for this, which I think it looks awesome because you can't even tell it's, it's not a real book. It's just a printed cover. And I really wanted that book to be the A to B throughout the whole story, um, to have that like full circle moment. I really wanted that to be like the driving uh, factor and driving motivation for for his own emotions. The the focus pull shot was actually something I thought of on the spot. It's such a great way to combine two shots instead of cutting away to a close up of the book. It's kind of just like shows his expression. Then as he turns around, like it focuses on the book that he's thinking about. On to scene two, we filmed the bedroom scene on day two of filming. Day one, we kind of ruled it out because it was essentially just cloudy and raining all day. On the second day of filming, it was actually some bright sunshine. So we thought we could get some light rays through the window. And we did, but it was actually really hard to, to see them. Uh, when it was kind of flat on, like the, the opening shot to the bedroom scene, you can't actually see the light rays, but to, your, to our eyes, we could see it. I think it was just on, on upon reflection, I think it's because the room 
wasn't dark enough and that light wasn't strong enough coming through because it did get stronger as the day went on so we tried it you can kind of see it but it doesn't work as nicely so you kind of just see the sun flare peeking over his forehead and you can kind of see it around his neck area with the with the light rays coming through i just use an aerosol can to, to try and help with the light rays coming through but we got a little bit but it's a bit annoying it wasn't more but is what it is. It's, it's kind of ironic as well that in this scene where Ethan looks at his uh, picture that he literally just ordered and it came like a, a, the week we were filming, uh, that he's looking at that disappointed when he, in reality he's absolutely buzzing with it. He took it on his uh, recent solo trip to Norway and uh, it's such an amazing picture and it's just funny that we're using it in this film and he's gutted about it which just is so far from the truth. Now on to the kettle shot that the, the opens the kitchen scene. Uh, it's probably the coolest and most creative and the shot that everyone keeps asking me, oh, how'd you do that shot? So essentially we used a GoPro Hero 9 and we had a bit of trouble with the exposure. So we just had it at, I think it was like 200 ISO with a flat color, medium sharpness. And we actually attempted to do it on the first day, but when we poured the water in, we tried to uh, just, just let the GoPro at the bottom and it kept like shaking as he was filling up the, the kettle. We left it because we didn't, we didn't have any tape at the time and we thought tape would work. And then we went on to the second day of filming knowing that I was going to reshoot it. And we tried to tape at the bottom, but because there was, there was like chalk and limestone at the bottom, the, the tape wouldn't stick to the bottom of the kettle. So we opted to just stuffing paper at the bottom to wedge in the GoPro. And it worked so well, like the GoPro was so solid. We, we had a couple of occasions where we did it like 10 times. And on the ninth time we did it, we, we took everything out to the GoPro out. And then we realized once we were happy with Ethan's like face expressions and the timing of him taking the lid off and pouring the water in, uh, we realized there was a bit of paper that went over the lens. So we couldn't use that. So we had to put everything back in, paper, tape, everything. And uh, that, that last shot is the last one we did and it's perfect. It works so, so well. It was interesting to grade because obviously there isn't a lot of information on there, but I think it was shot at like 5K on the, on the GoPro Hero 9, which is unbelievable for a GoPro. But yeah, it's such a cool shot, but, and it's fairly simple to do. It just takes a little bit of thinking to actually wedge it in and make sure the GoPro doesn't move at the bottom. And in this scene in particular, I really wanted to go through the motion of getting your best ideas when you're not doing something that creative. So. In this scene, he's, he's making a coffee and he kind of gets that light bulb moment of, oh, why not go back to where I started? And I really, I really wanted that in this film because it's so important, especially as a creative, like you do get those moments, whether it be in the shower, making a coffee, making dinner. Whenever you're doing something that's mindless, you often get your best creative ideas. And I wanted that to be in this film. And I think Ethan's acting in this scene just, just helps move along that concept as well, which I absolutely love. My music I got from Epidemic Sounds, which I always do. I, I, I love everything they have on there. And the, when he realizes that he, he should go back to the start and this part in particular where the, the music actually lifts up and there's a nice golden sunset and he actually looks fulfilled and happy again. The music is so important to that because before it's just kind of like a slow, deep piano. And then you suddenly have this like, orchestra come in where it just sounds so uplifting and so like he's on the right path upwards it's it's interesting because i wanted the maybe i should go back to why i started coming in as that like sunset shot comes in but it it, lo it lost its impact it didn't really quite make sense so i had it like i did at the start on a black screen text coming up voiceover and then that music just comes in and just catches your attention straight away and then you're just hooked onto it and you just want to see where the story goes and i think that's such an important part of like breaking up film anyway to kind of put it into like part one part two part three where part one is he's sad he he's he's lost his passion part two is him figuring out how to get it back he gets it back and then part three is him finally getting it back and him being happily ever after and it's interesting with the weather because this the the sunset shots with the with the donkeys that was shot on day one where it was absolutely chucking it down all day completely raining uh and we went out got some lunch um and then we headed to the field and literally as we walked up to the donkeys that sun was just coming straight through the trees and it was there for about i wouldn't even say five minutes i literally got that one shot and then i redid the shot just to to make sure i had another one and the sun was already gone by the time i we walked back and went to do it again. And it's clever because when we were actually like, when he was looking satisfied with looking at the donkeys and taking pictures of them, the sun had already gone. Uh, there was no orange in the sky whatsoever. So I had that 
Amazon light bar on the corner of this gate out of frame and I just put it on as bright as it can on the orange as it went and just pointed it at his face and it created this really nice orange glow that made it look like the sun was just coming through the clouds and it wasn't, it was not there whatsoever. And that was just a cool trick with the light and I'm really happy with how those shots turned out in particular. And we literally shot that whole scene in the space of about 10 minutes because this, after the sun went and I set the light up and we got those shots of him looking satisfied, it just absolutely chucked it down again. So we shot that whole thing in about 10 to 15 minutes, which is nuts if you think about it. But literally as we were walking away and we got in the car, I was just like, oh my God, that was so lucky. And I just knew at that moment that we got everything we needed. And Ethan was amazing, like he was throughout the whole entire process and film. Now, the ending changed slightly because I had the idea in my head that he was going to put the book in the bin. But the shot just didn't look good at all. Um, he didn't really have a big bin. And the angle of how I wanted him to walk through the frame and end up in the conservatory where the ending shot is... We j it just didn't it didn't work it didn't make any sense so Ethan actually come up with the idea of just putting his coat on which matched up to the bit we added of him actually walking through the door it, in we actually shot him turning around closing the door and then taking the coat off and then chucking it on the on the settee where the book is and him walking off but we cut that because it, it didn't you, when you walk through the door you know you're going to take your coat off and put it on the chair so it didn't make any sense it, it we, we cut it out but I just wanted this ending piece to really emphasize the fact he's done with the book like the book was the reason why he kind of got really sad at the start and i wanted to emphasize him forgetting about it like it's out of his mind now he doesn't care about it and i think with him putting his coat onto the book it kind of just symbolizes that he's done with it it's out of his head he's forgotten about it because it needed to to be a fulfilling moment to the a to b of him that being the reason he was sad to him forgetting about it like it, it needed to be prominent and so yeah that that worked out really nice and credit to ethan for thinking of that shot I chose to do all the shots on tripod and about 90% of the film was shot on a tripod because uh, I really wanted to pay attention to what was going on in the frame rather than getting sidetracked with the camera movement. Don't get me wrong, there was a couple of shots that I opted to do handheld because I wanted to have that like free feeling, especially towards the end of the video. Like, the video is not boxed off, it's kind of like has some sort of movement and the sunset shots works really, really nicely with that handheld as well. Sticking on a tripod isn't something I always do. I, I normally always go handheld with my, with my big rig, but I wanted to experiment with this and it was such a good learning experience for me to just stick on a tripod and see what angles I can create, especially the one with above the door, like we put that so high and uh it took a couple of goes to do it but it's such a unique angle where it's not really a normal perspective that you would normally see i think that just makes it visually engaging as well and as long as it helps on the story you can really do any creative shots you like like the kettle one for example and uh for a, a, a one-man band shooting this whole film i'm so happy with it the storytelling is really strong uh, that Ethan's acting's amazing. The voiceover is really nice. The shots I'm super happy with. The lighting works really nicely. All in all, I think I got everything I wanted to out of doing this project and this short film. And it's such an amazing video for me to have in my portfolio and just kind of show what I can do with, with story and making videos look amazing. Um, hopefully you also agree. <laughs> but yeah, it was really refreshing for me to do something like this and... It definitely won't be the last time I do it. Um, I kind of said in a, in a couple of videos back that I was I had a big project in mind and this was that big project. So it's uh, it's nice for that finally to be out and hopefully some of you would have related to it in some way and taken something away from it. But I really enjoyed the process. So <laughs> that's all that really matters. I hope you enjoyed the film and I will see you soon.